Hi there, I'm Garrett. Today, we're making real barbed wire, just smaller than usual, on this episode of The Miniature Men. All right, so before we get started, we need to get everything we need. So let's see what's coming outside of the box today on this episode. Pliers, some wire cutters. Not your hobby clippers or you're gonna ruin them. Your Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. You could also use Loctite Brush On Glue. It's a little bit thicker, but it holds a little bit better. Go ahead and get your paper clip. Any plain Jane paper clip will do. Some 0.2 millimeter wire. It's very important that you get 0.2 millimeter for it to look right. A power drill. You could do cordless or corded. It's all the same. <laughs> Lastly, you're gonna need a vise. This helps you do it by yourself, but if you have a friend, they can just hold some pliers for you instead. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wire cutter and we're gonna clip our paper clip apart. Any U-shaped piece is gonna be fine. Take our paper clip that we bent at the points there, and we're gonna insert that into the drill while we're holding this. It's kind of a complex move here, but you should be able to bojangle that in just fine. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna take our wire here and we're gonna clip off a good length of it, let's say a foot and a half, to get started. Okay, so we're gonna take some of our wire there and we've looped it through the point of the drill we made. Then you take both of those ends and you place them in the vise. Don't tighten it just yet. We're not ready yet. We're gonna cut out one third piece of wire here almost as long, just a little bit longer, than this double piece of wire here. We're gonna insert that into the vise, and then we're gonna tighten it. <sighs> so we got it all tied up here. Let's go ahead and use the power drill here. And drive, finger on the trigger, and go nice and slow as we wind it up. You wanna make sure to keep tension between the vise and the hand drill. If you don't do that, you can have it kink up real bad. Perfect. Let's go ahead and have you guys come up close and see it. All right, so now you can see me tying the wire around the, the braid right after the vise. The vise is holding it in place, making it easy for me. If it wasn't there, it would be kind of a struggle. I'm just getting this first knot tied off. It doesn't need to be neat. This is just to get me started, to give me a good angle of approach on the first actual barbs we're gonna be making right after this. I'm gonna go ahead and crimp it together to make sure it's secure. I don't want it moving around when I get started on the next knot. All right, we got the pliers tightened on. The wire goes in a loop around the braid and the pliers are holding in place, keeping it from slipping any further back on the braid. We start tightening it up. That's one. And we use the fingers and the thumbs to keep it nice and contacted to the braid. That's two. We're really putting pressure on at every little point to ensure full contact. That's three. We're leaving the bottom, crimping it one more time, looping around the braid, but now the pliers are there again to keep it from slipping any further back and we're starting the process over. This is how it's gonna go for the rest of the project. You'll be tying your knot, exiting the opposite way you came in after tying three loops, holding the next plier in place, one big loop around the plier, holding it there, and starting your knot over again. It's important to say at this point that what you're seeing on camera here is 0.5 millimeter wire. I use that because it made it easier for the camera to show you what I'm doing here. If you wanna make this for your bases, I still really recommend you use 0.2 millimeter wire. That's what I actually use. It just doesn't show up good on camera. So make sure that that's what you buy when it's time to put things together. Another thing that I did for the camera that you shouldn't do is I left it attached to the screwdriver. That means I had to do a little more work about getting my hands around. 
if you detach that screwdriver paperclip, you should have a little bit of an easier time moving your hands around. I just needed a little help keeping the braid in front of the camera there. All right, so you ran out of wire before you ran out of braid. Don't panic, just get some more wire, use your pliers to clamp it to the braid and start wrapping again like you did when you started. From there, it'll be the exact same as every other knot you've tied so far. Now we know everything there is to know about the hard part. We're staying tight on the knots, we're alternating the loops, and we're gonna finish up nice and easy here. Let's go ahead and let's reach for our Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, and I'll show you an extra step that I like to take to keep things locked in nice and tight. The Extra Thin Cement isn't necessary if you've tied down everything perfectly, but I sometimes struggle with that, and this helps make sure that the knots don't slip around at the end of the project. The cement is so thin that if it's on top of something, it'll probably not be noticed. Just make sure that it's not pooling up in these big puddles on top of the knots or on the braids. Sometimes the extra thin cement doesn't bond the way you want. You might need to use some Loctite super glue or any brand of brush on super glue. This will be more viscous, so it'll bond the knots to the braid a little bit easier, but it shows up more when you paint it. You can cover that up by making it look like rust or corrosion or caked on mud, but if you want to avoid that, making sure that you use the minimum amount is the best thing to do. If you can, try to aim for the sides of the knot as closely as possible. My brush is pretty blown out here. I'm trying really hard to get it on right. If you have an opportunity to use a better brush than the one I have, get rid of the old brush. Don't struggle like I am here. All right, go ahead and grab those wire cutters and start getting to work. You're gonna start cutting off the excess material from each loop. You wanna leave about two millimeters off of the braid just to make it look like it's real barbed wire there. You wanna make sure you're using a sharp pair of wire cutters if you use a dull pair like I did here, you might find you twist and bend the metal instead of snipping it, and that might cause you to break a couple of your knots loose. You don't want to do that. Go ahead and get yourself a fresh pair of wire cutters for this one. And that's it. You're seeing that the barbed wire is taking shape after you cut all that excess material from the loops. You have a complete line of barbed wire. Go ahead and do what you want with it. You can use it like it is, you can paint it up, put some rust on it, you can make it caked with mud, and now you have as much as you want because you can make it. Okay, so that's the end of the video. As you guys can see here, this is what 0.2 millimeter wire looks like on your minis. On the video, I was showing you guys 0.5 millimeter wire. I don't suggest you use this for your infantry models because it looks a little bit big. Maybe if you like that style, you can use it, but I really recommend you use 0.2 millimeter wire. If you guys have any other comments about what kind of wire we use today, please put it in the comments below. Otherwise, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. If you need any ideas about what to use with your barbed wire, check out this video here about using rubble bases. We got it. We don't got it.